Hey folks, Mark Guido here with Grand Adventure. And some may find this shocking, but believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever had the RV fully hooked up in a campsite. Uh, I'll explain all about it in this episode of Grand Adventure, so stay tuned. Now I'm at the Rangeland Court RV Park and Motel in the tiny town of Moorcroft, Wyoming. Population about 900 folks. This is just off I-90 in eastern Wyoming. Um, the rationale I had here is they wanted 35 a night for this uh, RV pad and I wanted to get the truck and the rig washed. Um, when I checked in I made sure that that was okay. and. Uh, by the time you figure the gasoline I'd be putting in the generator and the quarters I'd be sticking in the car wash uh, pretty much paid for the night. So uh, it was nice to be able to take a longer shower than normal, not a Navy shower. Uh, got the rig all cleaned up yesterday, uh, fully soaked down and washed both the truck and the trailer. Now the owners, uh, Melinda and Billy Morgan, are absolutely fabulous folks. Uh, they couldn't have made our stay any more comfortable here. There are only five gravel pads here, but they come with full hookups, water, electric, and sewer. Uh, like I said, less than a mile off the freeway, we're about a block's walk from a small grocery store and a couple of bar slash liquor stores. Um, so there are amenities. There's a gas station right down the street that's pretty reasonably priced, a Sinclair. Uh, so this was a good highway stop for us last night before we start heading further west. Now we're only about 25 miles south of Devil's Tower National Monument. Designated America's first national monument in 1906, Devil's Tower rises 867 feet above the land surrounding it. Formed from magma deep below the Earth's crust, scientists now believe that the magma intruded the sedimentary rock above it before the latter wore away through erosion, thereby exposing the tower. The black-tailed prairie dogs at Devil's Tower are much less skittish and far more vocal than their counterparts we found in the Badlands. Be aware that there's very limited RV parking at the visitor center at the base of the tower. We've left Moorcroft and are continuing westward on I-90. The Bighorn Mountains visible on the horizon mark the end of the Great Plains and our planned destination for tonight. We don't yet have any specific plans. We simply intend to find legal dispersed boondocking in the Bighorn National Forest. Along the way, we pass through the Wyoming cities of Gillette, Buffalo, and Sheridan, the latter a railroad town at the foot of the Bighorn Mountains. Sheridan's downtown core appears prosperous and busy with shops, restaurants, and bars lining both sides of Main Street. There's plenty for train buffs to see, both modern and historic. I timed this videography stop well. These BNSF locomotives are pulling a train of empty coal cars. Lots of coal cars. Well, that took a lot longer than I expected. For this whole time, the rig's been on the other side of the tracks, with the engine running to keep the dogs cool. Oh well, uh, at least no one drove off with it. A few miles northeast of Sheridan, US-14 begins a long, arduous, and relentless climb into the Bighorn Mountains. So we're leaving the Great Plains in the rearview mirror. The view from the top is nothing short of stunning. You can see some of the first switchbacks of US-14 below. Apparently, I'm not the only one who enjoys this view.
So boy, that grade was worth every mile. Would you look at this spot for enjoying a cold one? It really doesn't get any better. We're in the Bighorn National Forest at about 7,800 feet. Uh, we found a forest service road with legal dispersed camping not too far from the top of that grade, just a little bit west, uh, a couple of miles. Uh, we're just off US 14. The girls sure seem to like this spot too. After last night on a leash, I'm really not surprised. Our only neighbors of sorts are two travel trailers a couple hundred yards away in a spot that I found on Google Earth and intended to use. However, there's no one around. They seem to have dropped those trailers to reserve the spot for the coming weekend. It's a practice that I find particularly annoying and that I believe is against Forest Service policy. And because there's no one at those trailers, we're essentially the only campers for miles around. Just gorgeous. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of Grand Adventure. Uh, if you uh, like this video, give us a thumbs up down below. If you have any questions or comments, hit us up in the comment section and we'll do our best to help you out. If you're not yet one of our Grand Adventurers, smash that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and until next time, please remember, life is nothing but a Grand Adventure. We'll see you soon.